Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Dawson, and today my fellow classmates and I are here to talk to you about our experience of learning in a greenhouse classroom and what we know about building a sustainable future for our planet. For starters, learning in a greenhouse is incredible. Something new, a change of pace, if you will. And considering the times, doesn't it make sense? Today, our communities face an array of modern problems on both a global and national scale. Some of these problems include climate change, a growing population and health crisis, and global issues of food security. Just to name a few, but we think our greenhouse can help. You see, modern industrial advances have changed the way we live. We go to work differently, we eat differently, we interact with ourselves and each other differently. And in some cases, this is a great thing, like this TEDx talk and these fancy iPads we're using. Advances in science, technology, medicine, and education have been major marks of human progress for something we should be proud of. However, in other instances, we know the full capacity of our progress has not been fully achieved. Concerning issues of food security alone, our modern system hasn't figured it all out. And we all know this. Fast food and unhealthy diets have contributed exponentially to issues of obesity and diabetes. Large industrial corporations who care more about profit margins than quality control have altered the availability of healthy meals and have way too much influence on the market. And don't even get me started on chemical pesticides, GMOs, and the harmful industrial farming techniques of our modern world. These are some of the major problems of our 21st century. This is our planet and we're not respecting it. In our humble opinion, it's about time we started thinking to the solutions of these problems as well. This is where our greenhouse comes in. I'm Asia Williams, and last year our school, the Manhattan School for Children, became New York City's first public school to build a modern, state-of-the-art greenhouse on its rooftop. And let me tell you, our greenhouse is pretty cool. <laughs> we grow an array of healthy and organic fruits and vegetables like herbs, lettuce, cucumbers, tomatoes, cilantro, sweet peas, broccoli, just to name a few. But our greenhouse is so much more than that. Here at MSC, our greenhouse serves as an extension of our school science department. And in the greenhouse classroom, we learn about all sorts of different subject areas, like math, science, technology, health, and agriculture. This year, in our greenhouse module entitled Farmers on the Roof, we use the lens of hydroponic agriculture and vertical farming technology to, to learn about urban farming and to consider how some of these 21st century techniques may be used to build the solutions for our future. Hey there, my name is Wesley Vasquez, and I'd like to start off by asking you all a question. How many of you still believe that today conventional farming still looks like this? Well, they don't. They look more like this and this, and this. <laughs> Gigantic mega farms have changed the way we eat. As James has already mentioned, they provide us with genetically modified produce shipped at high cost from thousands of miles away. They fatten us up with hormone-based meat and dairy, and they damage our land, our nutrient-rich soil, and our forests with single crop specialization. But there is another way. This year, we began our exploration of the greenhouse with the study of hydroponic agriculture, the process of cultivating plants in a nutrient-rich solution rather than soil. In the greenhouse, our main method of hydroponic growing is through the NFT process. NFT is an acronym for nutrient film technique, and an NFT system is a hydroponic growing system designed to maximize plant production and conserve water. Basically, an NFT system looks like this. A nutrient-rich solution is cycled through slope gutters, saturating plant roots and providing plants with everything they need for a proper diet. It's a 24-hour cycle of water, oxygen, and nutrients. And through the process of studying the NFT, we've also learned about biology, plant health, and the process of photosynthesis. Um, however, this is just the beginning. The special thing about our greenhouse is that each of the hydroponic systems we've learned about have become vehicles of exploring other areas of study. For example, through examining the construction process of the NFT, we've learned about building design and engineering, as well as the important roles that water pressure, gravity, and circulation play in such a technology. Likewise, continue with this lens of hydroponics, we also learned about the chemical elements in the periodic table, 
Remember that mysterious nutrient solution James mentioned while explaining the NFT? Does anyone have any idea what makes up this nutrient solution? Hmm? Do you? No? 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 All right. Okay. As we discovered, it turned out that they are 16 natural elements required by a plant for life. And as you may have guessed, you can find them all located on the periodic table above. Here in our greenhouse, the nutrient solution is vital to our operation. It maximizes plant growth and can increases production capacity. Another thing we've learned about through our study of the greenhouse is weather patterns in New York City. As you might imagine, optimal weather conditions result in optimal plant growth. So weather watching and temperature adjustment is crucial. If it's too hot in our greenhouse, window and ceiling vents open up and cooling fans turn on. Likewise, if the greenhouse is too cold, a sun curtain covers the top of the greenhouse ceiling to keep heat contained inside. These and many more technologies of the greenhouse are what we work with every day. Though I won't go into too much detail, we've learned about what water collection and purification through our rainwater catchment system. We've learned about aquaculture and fish farming through our aquaponics tank, and we've learned about compost, recycling, and biodegradable materials. And then, most importantly, we've learned about innovation and taking hydroponic farming vertical. The VIG, which stands 15 feet tall along the backside of our greenhouse, maximizes plant production in space. Instead of using a horizontal model, like the NFT, the VIG, an acronym for Vertically Integrated Greenhouse, is structured top to bottom and takes up a fraction of the floor space. This fact is crucial for the future of urban farming. Imagine if we could build VIGs on all of the New York City skyscrapers, like the Time Warner Building, the Empire State Building, and the future Freedom Tower. It could revolutionize the way we eat and change the way our food travels by reducing the high costs associated with food miles, transportation, and refrigerated storage. You see, we've industrialized our food process so much between specialization, technology, efficiency, and large-scale production that we can't just go back to the way things were. We have to adapt and make these advanced systems of technology work for us in a positive way. And this is the way of the future. These are our 21st century solutions to our 21st century problems. That is the beauty of our greenhouse, and that is what we're here today to demonstrate. Not only does our greenhouse classroom help us build healthier communities, eat local foods, and reduce food miles, it's more than that. Our greenhouse is a center for learning, for science, technology, engineering, for innovation, and for informing us of the issues of today and helping us to build the future of tomorrow. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.